Hey guys, what's up? It's Moz here, and welcome back to another video. So I want to start off by apologizing for not uploading for so long. I can make an update video on that if any of you guys would like. But anyways, for today's video, I want to be showing you guys the best OBS recording settings for 2018, whether that's for PUBG, Minecraft, CSGO, or really anything on your screen. These settings will get you HD 1080p footage and 60fps with no lag whatsoever. I actually made the first 2017 recording settings video, and that will probably hit a million views this year. So I thought I'd make an update video for you guys. If you have any questions whatsoever, shoot me a follow on Twitter, DM me, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If this video does help you at all, please hit that like button, that's all I ask, but anyways, let's get on with the video. Alright, so first things first is go ahead and open up OBS, and if for some reason you haven't already downloaded it, I will have a download link in the description below in case you guys want to check that out. But anyways, once you're here, if you don't see a black rectangle like the one I'm showing you guys right now, right click your screen and hit enable preview, so maybe yours looks like this, so just right click it, enable preview, and it should look similar to mine. So now that we have OBS open, the first thing that I want to do is rename the default scene to like something like screen recording, just so it's easier for me to categorize. This is going to be a basic OBS guide, but in case you do need different settings for different reasons, Scenes can be incredibly useful, you can have one for like a normal desktop recording, one for playing games with the face cam, and a bunch of other things. But anyways, I'm just going to rename this one to screen recording by right clicking it, hit rename, and then I can just type in a new name. So once you type in a new name and hit enter, you should be good to go. Now if I actually want to record my screen, all I have to do is click the plus button right here under the sources box. When I'm selected on this scene, or the current scene that I want to actually edit, from there I just have to go to display capture, click OK right here, and then from here I can pick my monitor in case I do have more than one monitor, which in my situation I do. There's a pretty good chance that most of you guys only have one showing up right here so that should be good to go so make sure you're selected on that and if you have this selected then that means that whoever's watching your video will be able to see like the little cursor or the mouse on your screen so i do like to keep that checked and then i hit ok and as you guys can see we will have like an inception style thing on our screen so anyways it does look pretty trippy at times if you do move it around or something like that but i think it looks pretty cool too but anyways back to the video so of course i did pick display capture for my source because i wanted to record my screen but feel free to click the plus button and do like a game capture or like a video capture to use your webcam or really anything else on here and one thing i do want to say is sometimes if you use game capture and you're recording like a steam game or something there's a pretty good chance that like your screen might just come out black in the final recording so if that's the case then just stop using game capture and only use display capture it basically does the same thing and there's almost never any errors with it so that's why i like using it but anyways from here let's head over to the settings so go here click settings and you should be good to go so the first tab that you're going to be put into is going to be the general tab and from here you can basically just change your theme if you'd like to but i'm going to leave mine on default however the dark one does look pretty cool but just for the video purposes i'm just going to leave mine on default from there we can move on to output and yeah we're going to be skipping the stream tab but if you guys do want me to make a video on that then please let me know in the comment section below and i can make a best obs streaming guide for 2018 but anyways once we're here what you want to do is change the output mode from simple to advanced and then head over to the recording tab. So this is where we're going to get into the good stuff. So go ahead and leave your type on standard. You don't have to change anything over there. But what we do want to do is change our recording path. So this is going to be a really important part of this video. So be sure to pay attention. So I like to save my recordings to my secondary hard drive. So it doesn't clutter up space on my main one. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to go ahead and click browse right here. And I'm just going to go to my desktop and create a new folder. And I'm not even going to give it a name. I'm just going to make a new folder. Actually, sure, I'll just name it videos. So now that I named it videos, I just have to hit enter. Then I'm going to double click on the folder. And then from there, just hit select folder. So as you guys can see a new folder has been made on my desktop called videos and it is a blank folder there's nothing inside of it but basically setting this path means that every video we record on obs is going to get saved to this folder in case we want to watch it back later or upload it to youtube or maybe even edit it so of course i do have it on my desktop just for the tutorial but ideally you would probably put it on like a videos folder in your documents or something like that the next thing which is incredibly important is to change your recording format to mp4 from flv unless you do know what you're doing and think you might need something else but for the common person mp4 will get the job done each time and moving on from that i personally keep my audio track at one i don't feel like i need to do anything more with that but play around with it if you think you need it otherwise you should be fine with one moving on to the encoder another important part if you do have an nvidia graphics card in your computer like a gtx 960 a 1070 or really anything like that go ahead and pick the nvidia encoder h.264 option you can also use the x.264 option but for this video i'm going to be using the nvidia encoder and on the chance that you do have an AMD graphics card instead of an NVIDIA one, then you should have an option in this list that says something like AMD or Radeon or something like that. So just go ahead and pick that yourself. But realistically speaking, it should automatically pop up no matter what you have in your PC, just because your PC will automatically recognize it. So I went ahead and picked my NVIDIA encoder H.264. For the rescale output, I do like to leave mine unchecked because I don't mess with that, but this is really helpful in case you record in 1080p but you want your video to come out in like 720p, or vice versa. It's basically just upscaling and downscaling, so it's not too important for this video. Um, we can also leave whatever this thing is blank, we don't have to mess with that. But for the rate control, I do like to use CBR, so make sure you change yours to CBR as well. And CBR actually stands for constant bitrate, and you use this to determine the quality of your videos and how crispy you want them to be. So what I like to do is I change mine from the default 2500 to 40,000. And the reason I do that is because it gives me the 
the best quality needed for my videos, and I do have a pretty beefy computer, so running at 40,000 doesn't make mine slow down at all. But in case you're recording and you notice some lag while you're recording or in the recorded file after you're done recording, just lower it until you find what works best for your computer. And if you do have a really good PC, then maybe even try raising it to no more than 50,000. Maybe set 50,000 as your max, and then if you find something better, then maybe do that, but I think 40,000 is a really good median, so just go with that for the video. I also leave my keyframe interval at zero, and I leave the rest at default, main, and auto. I do make sure to enable two-pass encoding, I think these are all the default settings right here, and I also leave GPU at zero and B frames at two. From there, just go ahead and click on apply just to make sure that all the changes have saved, and we're going to move on to the audio tab up here. Now since we are doing a local recording, I like to scale mine all the way up from 160 to 320, and that's going to get us the best audio possible, so there's not really much else we have to do here in case you do have other audio tracks and maybe up those too, but from there click on apply and we can move on to the other audio tab which is on the left. So for your sample rate, you do want to make sure that it's the exact same rate as your actual microphone. So to check what your sample rate is on your microphone, all you have to do is go down here and right click on where the volume is. From there, click on playback devices. And then once you're here, click on the recording tab. From there, right click on your microphone, the one that should be moving whenever you're talking. Right click on that, hit properties, go to advanced, and then whatever number this is right here, that's going to be your sample rate. So of course you can change it to a higher one if you do want to. I think I did change mine from 44,100 to 48,000 a few months ago. So since mine is 48,000, I can leak, exit out of this. And just up mine from 44,100 to 48,000. And it should be good to go. So just make sure yours matches whatever your microphone is. Don't copy my settings if your microphone doesn't allow you to do that. I do like to keep my channels at stereo. And then for my desktop audio device, this is really important. You can leave it on default if you do want to, but what I like to do is I just change it to wherever the sound in my computer is going to go. So when I do have my headset on, my all the sound, like any music I'm listening to, any Skype call I'm in, any Discord, or really anything, it all goes to my Astro headset. But in case you have yours go to like your PC monitor or maybe a speaker system or something like that, just go ahead and change it to whatever that is so that it recognizes where the audio is going. So for my secondary desktop audio device, I do leave it disabled because I just don't have one. And then moving on from that, for my mic auxiliary audio device, I do change it from default to my actual microphone. So Mine is the Yeti stereo microphone, also known as the Blue Yeti, but yours might be different depending on whatever it is. Just make sure you don't leave it on default, just manually select it just to make sure that everything is always recording the right thing. For the rest, I just disable it all and I don't like do anything here. And it might say that you might want to re restart your program for these settings to take effect, so I'm just going to do that with you guys. Click on apply, click OK, hit exit, and then just go ahead and open up OBS one more time. From there, let's head back over to the settings and we're going to go from the audio tab to the video tab. Now since I do record all of my videos in 1080p, I can leave both of these on 1080p, so I do have to change the second one up to 1080p so basically 1080p is just 1920 x 1080 that's just gonna get you to record your videos in 1080p now on the chance that your monitor has unusual dimensions and they're not like 1080p or 720p or something like that this is where you would change the output scale so that your video does come out exactly how you want it now that most people have upgraded their monitors to hd monitors 1920 x 1080p should be your perfect choice moving on from that the downscale filter is probably one of the most important things you can change and what you want to do is click on that and change it to sharpen scaling 32 samples it is the last one right there and the reason why we do that is because it's going to get us the best video quality possible and then moving on from that we can change the common fps values from 30 to 60 because that is the new standard and it's pretty noticeable when you're not using 60 fps on youtube so definitely pick 60 fps from there again we can hit apply and we can move on to the hotkeys so i don't do much with the hotkeys so i can't help you guys there but they are pretty useful in case you want to like start mute or stop your recording straight from your keyboard instead of using your mouse and things like that and now moving on to the last part of the video which is the advanced tab this is really important so definitely pay attention to the changes i make go ahead and change your process priority from normal to above normal. Once you do that, keep your rendering at Direct3D 11. Maybe if you do have something else like an AMD card, then that option might not show up. And I think the next best thing if you do have an AMD card is OpenGL. But if you do have Direct3D 11, definitely go with that. Now to get the best colors and quality possible in my videos, I do like to keep the color format at NV12, but I do change the color space from 601 to 709. And I also change the YUV color range from partial to full. So just gonna change that to full. And I'm almost sure that everything else I have here is default settings. I did reset all my OBS and I leave everything else the same. So from here, we can go ahead and click on apply. We can click OK and then we can actually make a test recording. So I'm just going to hit start recording. And once it says, once that changes from start, start recording to stop recording, you will see like a recording timer right here, which is going to be recording like how long your video has been going on for. I can minimize this and I can actually start like playing around with my screen. I just took out my script really quick. But if I move that around, move that around, just start moving random things around. Of course, ideally, you wouldn't be doing this in your video. You'd probably be playing a game or recording a presentation or something along those lines. So as you can see, I did move a bunch of things around. So if I was to go here, hit stop recording, and then I can go ahead and close out of OBS because I really don't need it anymore. If I look for my new folder that I made for my videos to get saved to, I can click that and I can double click on this. And I'm going to stop talking just so we can hear what I'm saying in the video. And once it says, once that changes from start, start recording to stop recording, 
you will see like a recording timer right here which is going to be recording like how long your video has been going on for i can minimize this quick but if i move that around move that around just start moving random things around of course ideally you wouldn't be doing this in your so awesome anyways guys that's pretty much it for the video please hit the like button if you guys did enjoy and don't forget to subscribe if it did help you at all with your recording also let me know what other tutorials you guys do want to see on my channel by commenting below or sending me a tweet but other than that i hope you guys did enjoy the video and i'll see you guys in my next one peace